Well, good morning, friends. One of my favorite fall vegetables is a good old collard green. We'll be right back after the break. Gonna plant some of these today together. Be right back. Well, welcome back. Today we're going to plant some uh, collard greens. I got these seeds at johnnyseed.com online. If you want to get some of these for yourself, good place to go and get seeds. Um, these are called top bunch, top bunch uh, collard greens. Um, I got my tree seed tray ready. I'm going to plant these in seed trays and start them in my outdoor seed starting rack. This is a great fall vegetable and I plant them in time to have them just in time for Thanksgiving because man they go good with that turkey. So today we're going to get them started in the, in the uh, seed trays, get them in the seed starting rack and we're going to watch the progression of these these um, collard greens all the way up until the day we harvest them together. Okay so let's get these into the seed uh, seed cups and get this show started. Okay, here's how I start all of my seeds. From I use a 10-20 starting tray, and I like to use the ones with the drain holes because I start my seeds outdoors, so I don't uh, have a problem with the drainage of the uh, water seeping through and getting anything wet on the inside of my house or the inside of an indoor container, seed starting container, because I, I do all my seed starting outside. So I like to have the, the drain holes in mind because I want to keep my cuts. I want the water to fall completely through my cups and um, and let me add water as needed instead of them standing in water for too long of a period of time, which rots my seeds. Okay, so that's, how, that's why I use the 1020 drain um, tray. Now I use my cups, my seed starting cups. I like to use the ones that have a, a you know at least a two to three inch deep uh, cell because I want to get a good root system through here before I try to push, pull that uh, little seedling out of there. Next thing I do is I add my seed starting mix and I make my own seed starting mix. So if you want to learn how to make this stuff at home, you can. Uh, we have a video on our channel that explains how to do that and demonstrates it pretty clear. Or you can, if you only have one or two trays to do, then just simply go buy some seed starting mix at your local nursery. Um, for me, I have many, many seed trays that I need to start, so it's more economical for me to make my own seed starting mix. Okay, so next thing I do is I use the mix. And I fill up my tray, my seeds, seed starting cells. Once I have it good and leveled off like this, then I come back through here and I mash in all of the seed cells. Mash them in good and tight. Use your fingers, push them down in there because this thing is just full of air. And if you have air inside these cells when you're trying to start your seeds, they're not gonna germinate. You know, you're just wasting your money and your time and very disappointing. So you want to keep these things good and tight when you get ready to start. So push them down good. And once I have them down packed in there pretty tight, the next thing I do is I pre-moisten. Some people pre-moisten their soil before they put it in, but I've always found it easier to do it like this. So you can do it either way you want. It's up to you. So now that I got it tight, I pre-moisten each cell by flooding it a little bit, okay. Let that soak down just for a few seconds. You see it just gobbles up that moisture, it's so dry. And once I got it where I don't see the water standing anymore, then I tamp down the tray. Now it's really good and tight and it's moist. I'm gonna use some um, spinach seeds here for this demonstration simply because the seeds are nice and big and you can see them on the camera. Here's the seeds. Now what I like to do is I like to put two to three seeds in each cell 
I'll let those seeds germinate and as the seedlings get up mature a little bit bigger where they're an inch or so tall, I'll come in with a pair of scissors and snip off, you know, the weakest looking seedlings and keep the best one. So I thin it down to where I have one seedling for each tray. So let's start out by putting a couple seeds in each one of these cells. And I try to make sure that I get them kind of close to the middle of the cell because if you don't, they run out to the end, you know, to the edge of the cup. And I just don't like them to grow down the edge of the cup. Okay. After I get the, uh, the seeds in the cups, I'm going to come back and I add in some more soil and level that back off again to where you got right at about a quarter of an inch of um, soil on top of those seeds. And right now this looks like I got more than a quarter inch, but keep in mind, it's full of air. So once I get it in there, again, I mash it down a little bit. I hit it with a little bit of water. You'll see it sink down some more. So I'm, I'm getting to that quarter inch, that magic quarter inch mark I'm looking for of soil over the top of the seed. You don't have to add very much water that time. And again, I tamp it down. Okay. Got my seeds in, put my little name tag in there. Got them planted, let's get them into the seed starting rack and get this show on the road. There we go. Got the collard greens in the rack, got them growing. So we'll be back in the days ahead and we'll watch this all the way out till we harvest them. So we'll see you soon. Well, the collard greens have been in a seed starting rack for, for two weeks. So let's take a look at it today and see how much progress we've made. Well, as you can see, they've come up and uh, they've made some beautiful little seedlings. I've got lots of true leaves. These things are about three inches tall right now. So it looks like we're about ready to start hardening these things off and uh, get them out into the earth garden. So let's get these um, about another week. I'll have them, we'll start getting them hardened off this week and um, we'll get these planted. We'll see you back here in about a week. Well, welcome back. We've been working on our collard greens on the hardening table for the last few days and they're about ready to go out into the earth garden today. So I wanted to, um, let you uh, walk you through what I'm planning to do this morning. I'm going to go out there to the uh, earth garden and I'm going to um, prepare that ground like I always do for all of my uh, uh, starter plants like this when I put them in out there. Um, first thing I'm going to do is take my four inch cultivator and I'll cultivate the, the couple of rows that I'm going to put in. I'm going to grade it out with my grade and rake and get it nice and smooth. Then I'm going to take my guide string and put it on my, uh, my row um, spacing to set my spacing correctly. I like to use 36 inches. I used to use 30 inches in Virginia and it got a little crowded as these things mature and cascaded out. <clears throat> so I increased that to 36 inches when I got to Florida and I think it's going to be a lot better uh, row spacing. <clears throat> Excuse me. The um, after I get the rows established, I'll go through and I'm going to dig my little holes and I'm going to put them in about 30 inches apart, each plant. And I'm going to dig my hole and I'm going to use a piece of fish with some uh, garden lime on top of the fish so that, you know, the animals don't smell it. Um, I think I'm pretty safe from the animals now with the, with the fence, but, you know, a raccoon or something could probably still get through here if you really wanted to. So I use that lime to mask the uh, smell of that fish decomposing so they don't come dig up and plant, you know, <laughs> trying to get to the fish. So I'll um, put that on there and then I'm going to use some um, some blood meal because I want to encourage lots of leaf growth with this uh, 
Uh, collard green, this is uh, you know the top bunch collard green. It's got a pretty nice leafy top on it, but um, I'm going to give them some blood meal to boost the nitrogen up and to get a little bit more foliage and um, much healthier foliage. And uh, after I get them in, water them in, and God takes over from there. And we'll watch the progression of these all the way out. So let's get started. Well, there we go. We got two rows of collard greens put in the ground, top bunch collard greens. So we'll be looking forward to these in the days ahead as we get closer to the holidays because I really like having these at Thanksgiving. So hopefully we'll have a frost by Thanksgiving. Anyway, we'll keep up with the progression of these little plants as they uh, mature over the weeks ahead and uh, we'll keep um, bringing that to you. So. We'll be back here in a couple of weeks and we'll watch uh, the development of these plants all the way up to harvest. See you in a couple of weeks. Well, our top bunch collard greens are really doing well and I think they're gonna be ready just in time for Thanksgiving and I sure hope so. My daughter Samantha and my grandson and her husband are gonna come over and eat with us and. My daughter loves daddy's collard greens, so I'm gonna make her up a big old bunch of them when she gets here. But anyway, these are um, doing well. I think they're ready to, you could start picking and harvesting these right now, but I'm hoping to get a, a little frost on before I can uh, harvest them. Um, we may get one before Thanksgiving, maybe not, but it is Florida, <laughs> but they'll still be good. And um, if I don't get a frost on them in November, I'll probably maybe get one in December and I'll have it for Christmas too. So either way, I'm gonna have plenty of collard greens. So we'll be back in the days ahead when we harvest some of these and I wanna, I wanna harvest a mess and I'll show you how I cut these up and cook them. And uh, maybe you can 
have collard greens for supper. So we'll see you back here in the days ahead. See you soon. Well, today's a big day. We're going to get to harvest the top bunch of collard greens. I'm going to make up a mess for my, my daughter, Samantha. She's coming over to visit me today. So that's a big day for me. I'm really looking forward to seeing her. I, haven't, I don't get to see her very much, even though we moved down to Florida, we're still two and a half hours apart. So <laughs> it's kind of difficult to see each other as often as we'd like to. But today she's coming to visit me. She's bringing my grandson for me to visit with and her husband. And we're gonna have a, a nice little meal together. And, and uh, Samantha loves daddy's collard greens. So I promised her I'd make her some. So we're gonna make them today and uh, take a look at these collard greens. They really came out really nice, really good. Um, variety of collard greens. Um, I'm going to harvest these around the bottom and work my way up and uh, get up enough of mess so I can make a nice meal. These, um, if I harvest them, you know, picking off the leaves from the bottom up, um, that allows the middle to continue to grow and you can get multiple harvest out of these. So let's get started and getting some of these, these up and getting ready to eat. Okay, I got my collard greens all harvested and I got them rinsed off really well over here in the sink. And um, these things are usually pretty clean when they come out of the garden. They, they, don't, they don't take a whole lot to clean up, really. But these are um, beautiful top bunch collards. And I just wanted to uh, demonstrate with you how I prepare these for cooking. And uh, maybe you might want to try this yourself. The first thing I do is I come up to the uh, about two, one third from, from the way from the top of the uh, leaf, and I grab a hold of that stem right there, and I break it like that. Then I take that and I rip it right back out of the out of the leaf. See, and that that is now chicken food. And see what it does? It it it, it debones it. <laughs> so what I do at this point is I take that beautiful leaf, and I fold it over like this and I roll it. Make a nice roll. And then I take it and I cut it in real thin little strips, see? And that makes little ribbons. It makes it cook easier, makes it more tender, and it's much easier to eat when you get ready to eat it. And see how it ribbons out? Nice, beautiful little ribbons. Very easy to eat, very easy to cook. So I'll, I'll fill up my pot with uh, all my little ribbons. And the next thing I do is I'll add in some salt and a couple of pieces of hog jowls. And I'll let these simmer on medium high for, um, you know, um, let them simmer on medium high for a couple of hours until they're nice and tender. So. Let me get the rest of these cut up, and uh, as soon as Samantha gets here, we'll give it a taste test to make sure it's still good. Well, we finally got our collard greens cooked up, and I got a nice mess of them for you, didn't I, baby? You did. This is my little girl, Samantha. Hi. I'm going to give her a little taste of Daddy's special collard greens. See how good they cook up when I ribbon them out? Of course, you're used to that, huh? Mm-hmm. And it might be a little hot. You can check that out, see if it's up All to right. snuff. Mmm, so good. Thank you, Daddy. You're welcome. <laughs> so anyway, we thank you for watching. I'm glad you came to visit me today and enjoyed some collard greens. Yeah. So until we see you next time, always remember.
by his hands we are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen.